Hey everyone, welcome back to another video over the Wreath Network on Try Hack Me. Today we're going to be taking a look at Task 40, AV Evasion with compiling Netcat and a reverse shell. Our web shell is all good, or well and good, but let's go for a full reverse shell. Unfortunately, we have a problem. Unlike in Linux, where there are usually many ways to obtain a reverse shell, the options in Windows are a lot fewer in number as Windows tends to not have as many scripting languages installed by default. Realistically, we have several options here. The first one, uh, PowerShell tends to be the go-to for uh, Windows reverse shells. Unfortunately, Defender knows what exactly what PowerShell reverse shells look like, so we'd have to uh, do some serious obfuscation to get this to work. We could try to get a PHP reverse shell, as we know that the target has a PHP interpreter installed. Windows PHP reverse shells tend to be iffy though, and again, they might trigger Defender. We could generate an executable reverse shell using MSF Venom, then upload and activate it using the web shell. Again, MSF Venom tends to be very distinctive, though. Uh, we could use the Veil framework to give us some interpreter shell executable that might bypass Defender, but let's try to keep this manual for the time. Equally, Shelter, though old, might give us exactly what we need. There are easier options, though. We could upload Netcat, and this is the quick and easy option. The only problem with updating Netcat is that there are hundreds of different variants. The version of Netcat for Windows uh, that comes with Kali is known to Defender, so we're going to have to need, we're going to need a different version. Fortunately, there are many floating around. Let's go ahead and use one from GitHub, and we can grab that here. So we have this wonderful repo, and we can clone this. Uh, let's go ahead, we'll copy this, and we're going to grab specifically the Netcat.exe. Let me pull up my terminal, and we will paste this in. To go ahead and clone that and we can see we should have netcat.exe here this repository already contains pre-compiled netcat binaries for both, uh, both 32 and 64-bit systems however this is an ideal time to talk about cross compilation techniques if you prefer to just use the default binaries then just skip to the last section of this task and use the netcat ex 64 exe binary from the repository which we're going to go ahead i'm going to clone that right now so that we have it uh, actually, we want to grab, uh, that is a directory, at netcat exe. We can see that we should have our 64-bit netcat here. So we're all set to go. Cross-compilation is an essential skill, although in many ways it's preferable to avoid it. First up, what is cross-compilation? The idea is to compile source code into a working program to run on a different platform. In other words, cross-compilation would allow us to compile a program for a different Linux kernel, a Windows program on Kali, as we're doing here, or even software for an embedded device or phone. Whilst uh, cross-compilation is a useful skill to have, it's often difficult to get completely correct. Ideally, we should always try to compile our code in an environment as close to the target environment as possible. For example, if, we exploit, uh, if an exploit or program is designed to work on CentOS 7.2, we should try to compile it in a CentOS uh, 7.2 VM if possible. This is just going to cut down problems. You will have problems if you don't do this and you're just going to make life a lot tougher on yourself in that way. Equally, it's essential that we get the same arch, uh, so architecture, as that of the target. A 64-bit program won't work very well on a 32-bit target. In fact, it just won't be able to run it. Sometimes it's easiest to just cross-compile, however. Generally speaking, cross-compiling Windows programs on Kali using the Ming W-W64 package for x64 systems, uh, we can just end up using that. This is not installed on Kali by default, however it is available in the Kali app repositories. I'm not going to do the cross-compilation for the sake of this demonstration, just so that you guys can uh, go through this lab very quickly. However, I am going to install this so that we have it. Uh, W64. This is something I do recommend playing with yourself. However, for the sake of the video, I'm going to be going through this pretty quickly. This is a big package, but once it's installed, we can start recompiling Netcat. Much like we use GCC to compile binaries on Linux, we can use MingW compilers to compile Windows binaries. These tend to have a very descriptive, uh, read long, names, but the one that's uh, of particular importance to us here is the x86, this specific one right there. This specifies that uh, we want to compile a 64-bit binary. 
inside the repository, move or uh, delete or move the two pre-compiled netcat binaries. Um, in this case, we're just going to use those again for the example that I'm doing. Uh, the repository provides a makefile, which we can use with some small alterations to compile the binary. Open up the makefile with your favorite text editor. The first two lines specify which compiler to use. Neither of these are quite what we're looking for, so comment out the first line and add another line underneath. So we'll go ahead and comment that out, um, and then we're going to go ahead and add this line down here. Now, when we run make to build the binary, the correct compiler will be used to generate a uh, x64 Windows executable. Note that there are a lot of warnings generated by the compiler, which have been redirected to dev null, as they should be, in the following screenshot for readability. These are nothing to worry about. The compilation should still be successful. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead and compile that. I won't worry about it. It's fairly simple as you've seen here. So bonus question, optional, follow the steps detailed above it to compile a copy of netcat.exe. Uh, we're not gonna do that. I'll just mark that as complete to skip past it. With a copy of netcat available, we now need to get it up to the target. Start a Python web server on your attacking machine as demonstrated numerous times previously. So we can go ahead. I'm going to start one here. Um, I'm already running this as root, so I don't need to do that. Uh, HTTP.server. I might need to turn off Starkiller in this case. Nope, it's going to let me do it. So we've started that, and we are serving from this directory, so we should be able to grab that netcat executable. Despite Windows often being much harder than Linux to upload files to, we do have a few options here. PowerShell might work, but with AMSI in play, it's a risk. We could use the file upload point that we originally exploited to upload an unrestricted PHP file uploader in the same way that we uploaded the original web shell, although this would be a bit of a pain with embedding the uploader in an image. We could also look for uh, other command line tools installed on the target, such as curl.exe or certutail.exe, both, both of which might allow for file upload. Try to execute both of these in the web shell. Both should work. What output do you get when running the command certutil.exe? So we can go ahead and go over here. And we can do certutil.exe. Let me zoom in a little bit. And you can see that we get uh, certutil dump or dash dump command completed successfully. Let's go ahead and copy this in and see if it takes it. And there we go. Certutil is a default Windows tool that is used, amongst other things, to download uh, CA certificates. This also makes it ideal for file transfers, but Defender flags it as malicious. Instead, we'll stick to trusty old curl. To use curl to upload your new copy of netcat to the target, or use curl to upload uh, your new copy of netcat to the target. Uh, we can do that with curl, and then, uh, let's see. Note that double backslashes are used there. This is purely to uh, how the web shell handles backslashes. So we can go ahead and copy this, and then I'm gonna edit it over here. I was making sure that it was encoded correctly. Uh, what is our IP? I know it is different this time because I've had to restart the network. Uh, let's go ahead, I'm gonna kill this. Um, IP A, and let me write that down so that we have it. Let's see what we got. So we have 10, 50, 73, 19. Ah, that, never mind. That is the same. Cool. So that makes things easy. So we can restart that. We'll switch back over here, and it's going to be 10, 50, 73.19, and then we want netcat.exe. Uh, we want specifically netcat64.exe, um, and we're going to name it netcat-dark.exe. Uh, if we don't have that dot in there, this will not work. So let's go ahead and run this. And we should see that we don't get anything back. But if we go here, we can see that we had a git request for netcat64.exe. So note the, uh, note the double backslashes used here. This is purely due to how the web shell handles backslashes. We need to escape the backslashes so that they are passed in as part of the command, as opposed to escaping the characters immediately after them. We can more, go ahead and mark that as completed because we've now uploaded our netcat uh, binary. Uh, we now have everything we need to get a reverse shell back from this target. Set up a netcat listener on your attacking machine, then in your web shell, use the following command. So let's go ahead. I don't think that I need my X for your, uh, I don't need Starkiller anymore. So we'll kill that. Um, and we can go ahead and CD, yeah, I can just do it in this directory. netcat-lvnp. 
and then we're gonna do this on uh let's do this on six <laughs> uh what port do i want to use let's do twenty thousand and try to remember that instead of messing up our ports like usual and now we can use this command so we would have this is our example we're gonna use powershell to run that and we can paste this on in and then we need to change this to be netcat dash dark.exe and then mine is 73 dash 19 and i need to specify my uh, port here which is going to be 20,000, and then we're going to execute command on that connection and i'm going to go ahead and copy this onto my clipboard if for whatever reason it fails so that we can uh, make sure that we actually get our shell back oh and there we go well, look at that this should result in a reverse shell from the target and there we go we can go ahead and mark that as uh as complete um note in order for this to work we had to wrap the netcat command inside of a powershell process to keep it from exiting early and that's going to do it for this video i will see you guys next time when we go over task 41 but until then happy hacking